Aloha, and Tashi Delay from Kauai Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center here on the island of Kauai. We present this class every Thursday night, six to eight o'clock Hawaiian time. And for those that live in faraway places that have come here and practice with us, we put it on our website, record it, uh, kawaiidharma.org. I'm Lamatashi. <clears throat> when we pre present these classes, they're, they're following the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, which is compared to all the other Buddhist traditions on the planet, unusual. And they actually call me the unconventional Lama or teacher. But the purpose of the Dharma is to understand that all humans, in fact, all sentient beings, animals, humans, and spirit, have Buddha nature, which means they have a wisdom nature innate in their consciousness. And humans don't know that. And so the purpose of the Buddhist teachings and this Dharma Center and this class is to give understanding to the people that are interested that this is a refuge. This innate nature in the mind is a refuge from pain and suffering of the drama mind. And everyone has this. And so our, our purpose is to turn on people to that fact and then like the other teachers of the Tibetan tradition, give them the, the means, the knowledge to understand that and how to use it skillfully. And so we call our tradition the path of skillful means. And I call it Bodhisattva Training School. When we start with practice to retrain our minds, to accept its true nature, and using that to become mature human beings with higher states of intelligence that exist in the minds of ordinary human beings. We start with refuge and the motivation that we are doing this for the benefit of all beings and we're doing this to bring these sentient beings to maturity, which is what we call Buddhahood. The word Buddha actually is a made up word in modern times. The Buddha Shakyamuni never called himself Buddha. And actually the term wasn't used until probably the 15th century. But this altruistic motivation is very simple. Since everyone in the universe and everything in the universe is your support system, is interconnected to you in a state of unity, you use the mirror of your mind to reflect your own inner true nature to them. And that's called the altruistic motivation of the bodhisattva, a person who is on a mission or path to reach maturity in the human condition. So I'm going to chant the first prayer that states that motivation. I'm going to chant it in Sanskrit, which is how all the 
Buddhist teachings, which we call the Dharma, are transmitted to all the tribes of this planet. Dag dong jo wa nam ke tha dong yam pe sam chem tham che du di ne ju te chi si jeng chu ning po la chi ki bar du. And that prayer states that in order to attain enlightenment for myself and limitless sentient beings, my mothers, we now all together take refuge and offer prostrations and other practices to reach Buddhahood in this lifetime. Then we do the refuge prayer. I'll chant it in Sanskrit and then we'll say it in Canadian. Paul Dan Lama Dampa Namla Chapsu Chio Yedam Chokor Gila Cho Namla Chapsu Chio Sanjay Chong Dende Namla Chapsu Chio Dampe Chur Namla Chapsu Chio Kaupe Gendum Dam La Chapsu Chiyo Kao Kondro Shokyun Sume Sho Yese Ki Shendong Dimpa Dam La Chapsu Chiyo In English or Canadian, we go for refuge. <coughs> to all the glorious holy lama. We go for refuge to all the yidams who are the deities gathered in our mandala practice. We go for refuge to all the Buddhas, those who have conquered their mind and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all this supreme Dharma. And we go for refuge to all the noble Sangha and we go for refuge to all the Dakas and Dakinis who are the protectors and defenders of the Dharma, all of them possessing the eye of transcending awareness. Then we chant the Bodhis Bodhisattva prayer called Bodhicitta. Sanjay Chodan Joki Chodama Chaitu Bardu Dagni Chapsu Chi Dagi Jen Soji Pen Sonam Ki Jola Panjur Sanjay Jumar And that goes like this, to the Buddha, Dharma, and this Supreme Assembly, we go for refuge until enlightenment. May I, through merit gained from practicing the six Bodhisattva disciplines, called the six perfections, accomplish Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. Now, there are many kinds of beings existing in our infinite universe, which has no beginning, middle, or end. Sentient beings are not the mineral life. They are not the plant life. They are existing creatures which have Buddha potential. And they are infinite in number and they fill this infinite universe. There isn't anywhere where in this universe you can go that there are not these sentient beings. 
humans and animals take birth on uncountable number of planets throughout the universe. Also animals together with the humans inhabit these livable planets. Spirits inhabit everything. They are everywhere. They inhabit space which is infinite. And their nature is the nature of boundless light. So some say that the spirits are already enlightened because light and space are the life force energy of the universe. It, it is what we are made of and everything. So we use the term enlightenment as a phrase for accomplishing human maturity using the word Buddha, their phenomena. But you must understand that there's, there's no limit in this term enlightenment. It's not a goal, it's not a it's not a place you go to like heaven. It's a very powerful, very kind and compassionate, and very intelligent state of mind. And on this planet, there are a few men and women, humans, who have that capacity of intelligence. One of my teachers, which almost everybody knows, is a good example, the Dalai Lama. But there are many others. And they're all these teachers are available to human beings to give them advice on how to also become intelligent. And when that situation occurs, then you have what we call a joyful nature. They use the word bliss. Bliss or amrita in Sanskrit is, is undefinable. But being undefinable, you can point at it as a state of joy or happiness of higher intelligence. And from the moment you start to do Dharma practice, to bring this wisdom nature to light in your own situation, then that state of joy is there. It's, it's immediately available. You don't have to go someplace to get it. You don't have to go to India to get it. You don't have to go to Tibet. So we're going to start with the methods that help human beings be healthy and attain these states of higher intelligence, their wisdom nature. And we're going to start tonight with the meditation practice of focusing on the breath with the three lights prana yoga breathing practice and then connect that 
to the five elements healing, which is how we deal with our body being healthy. And it works. But more importantly, it introduces the practitioner to the light of their own mind with the three lights healing applied to the breath and the elemental nature of space and the other elements applied to the body and the world around us. And then it's simple. You can teach it to children, you can teach it to, in schools, you can teach it to older people. And we do. But the simplicity of it is the same aspect of all the teachings of these practices that we do. And it's classified in the Hinayana path because it's available to even people that think they can bring themselves to maturity without any help. That's called Hinduism or Hinayana. You must have a teacher who already has these higher states of intelligence and can show you how to use them. And they must possess three qualities. The first one is interest in the well being of others based on the same motivation as a mother for her only child called kindness or kind heart, isn't it? And that together with compassion, which is called the interest in the well-being of others, you must also develop compassion with method. And so we use the path of skillful means, which we'll introduce in this path tonight. As, as a form of deity yoga. And then the third aspect is you must understand voidness, emptiness, which is the nature of space. As usable, as a way to understand how everything is and how to change or manipulate the imperfections of the environment and the world around us. And in some cases, the character and the unhealthy situation of others. So sit with your back straight, hands in a comfortable position, either in the lap or on the knees, head slightly tilted, eyes open, soften your gaze to the space and light about two feet in front, not too close and not to an object. Mouth closed, breathing through the nose if you can, otherwise your mouth slightly open. And when you have these positions in place, they're called mudras, then you bring your focus, which is also called awareness, to your breath. And to start with, simply focus on the inhale of the diaphragm expanding here, then the exhale, the diaphragm contracting spontaneously, just like the inhale and exhale. They, they're a unity, they work together, they support your life. And when you put your consciousness on them, you're applying a state of 
presence and peace and tranquility. So for a few moments, inhale, exhale. After three or four of those clearing breaths, then start the three lights breathing technique by imagining your inhale, <clears throat> the air you are inhaling to be white light filling your lungs, this whole area. The middle breath called the absorption breath visualizes red light flashing through your body, taking the energy of the elements to every cell in your body. Combine these two codes, these two lights, into blue light being exhaled out your nose and think of it to go to, into space, like the sky. As a powerful healing breath, to everyone. The term for this breath in Hawaii is a uh, lo ha again inhale white light fill your lungs the air you absorb containing the five elements all apply to every cell in your body. Visualize red light flashing through your body. Bring the two codes of white and red together and exhale blue light out your nose to space. Then to get the full benefit of this practice, count 21 of the three lights breaths. Inhale.
When you reach the 21st count of your, with your breath, <clears throat> take your focus off the breath. Collect the three lights into one tiny point of light and center it in your heart chakra in the middle of your chest in the central channel. The moment you do this, that pinpoint of light connects to the infinite light of boundless space. This is the energy program of all the elements, earth, water, fire, and air in space. To experience this healing energy, simply be present and contemplate the infinite light of boundless space. In Tibetan, this is called the all ground of the samsaric and nirvanic worlds. The word ground is interpreted as Bases, universal bases. Then resume the meditation by again inventing the particle as a tiny point of light in your heart center, creating a chakra, also called in Sanskrit a Bindu and in Tibetan a Tigli, and focusing on that point of light with your imagination, increase it to a tiny or very small sphere of clear light. Then focusing on that sphere of clear light, expand it into one of the five elements used for the five element healing practice. And tonight we're going to use the six sided cube labeled earth, yellow in color or gold. And you think of it about the size of your thumbnail. And keeping meditation and focus together with your imagination, visualize that six-sided cube to move out in front of your body and up before your eyes two feet in front. Then imagine that sphere to grow inside so that you can see your form body just as you are inside.
Then expand the six-sided cube labeled dirt in size so that it encompasses about a 50 mile radius in every direction and everything in that area inside the six-sided yellow cube. And expand it in size to completely enclose Mother Earth, included, including her atmosphere. And apply it to the solar system, all the planets and the sun in a radius of billions of miles in every direction inside. Then expanded in size to completely enclose our spiral disc shaped galaxy. Then move beyond the bounds of your conceptual mind and merge this symbol, this healing symbol, with boundless space. At this point, you just sit quietly, comfortably, present, and contemplate space as the nature of your own mind. When you do this, the all ground becomes what we call the Dharmakaya. Then return from that all pervasive situation of space and again invent the six sided cube enclosing the galaxy. Shrink it in size to just enclose our solar system. Smaller and smaller to just enclosing. Mother Earth. Then very much smaller to just enclose this island of Kauai and surrounding ocean, or for people in other places, their city or town, or a large area of where they are doing this practice. Shrink it in size to just enclosing your physical form inside, like the room or a large tent.
to finish the practice, bring it to its original small thumb size in front of your eyes. Drop it to chest level and bring it into your heart chakra. Shrink it to a tiny point of light and allow that to blend with the infinite light of space. Then bring this state of increased awareness to in front of your eyes and spread it to every area of what and whom you influence. And since this is Bodhisattva training, dedicate the virtue of the practice, we call that the merit, to all sentient beings everywhere. the symbol of the space, Dakini. Now tonight we're going to enter into the path of skillful means using the deity that introduced the Buddhist teachings from India to Tibet, Padmasambhava. Guru Rinpoche, <coughs> who was born in Kashmir and as a very powerful yogi, traveled to all the Himalayan countries as far as Bhutan and then entered to Tibet to meet with the King Chai Song Detchen and his consort Yeshe Soigel to benefit the Tibetan people with the Dharma. And before we enter into that practice, it was requested that that we explain the mind's nature as bliss. Using an aspiration prayer by the third Karmapa, of the Karmakagyu lineage, of the state of accomplishment called Mahamudra. It's also called Dzogchen, the great perfection in the middle path. And of course, many other terms. Mahamudra means the great view. It doesn't have limits. Unlike our drama mind, which is very restricted by the emotional programs that we insist on using on those screens of that type of consciousness. Now I'm reading this prayer and I'll make some explanations of the wording as we go along from the Book of Perfect Clarity, which is a 
condensed version of all of many, many different teachers commenting on this blissful nature of the mind and how to use it. Karmapa was called the Lama Rangju Dorju. And I was fortunate enough to have him as my teacher in his 16th incarnation. About 45 years ago. <laughs> so I'm going to read this, the Mahamudra aspiration pair, which states the true meaning of the blissful nature of the mind's intelligence. Homage and respect to the Lama Guru. All masters, Lamas, Yidams, deities, and so forth of the mandalas, and all the victorious ones and their spiritual children, through, through, throughout the three times, past, present, and future, in the 10 directions, infinite space, please pay heed to me and bestow your less blessings that I may fulfill the aspirations stated in this prayer. It springs forth from the pure snow mountain of clear thinking and spiritual deeds. And of myself and countless beings, may the streams of virtue undefiled by the three concepts of outer, inner, and secret flow into this ocean of the four kayas of all the victorious ones. And the four kayas are the Dharmakaya, which I mentioned just previously, the Sambhogakaya, the Nirmanakaya, and the Sabhavavikakaya of the loving kindness, compassion, and power of the teacher. For as long as one is not attained higher intelligence or maturity. May we throughout our successive lives and future rebirths never hear the words of misdeeds, pain, or suffering, but enjoy the sp splendorous ocean of happiness and virtue in true states of blissful awareness. Having obtained the supreme freedom and riches, possessing faith, perseverance, and higher intelligence, we follow an eminent spiritual guide and receive the nectar of his or her oral instruction, free of all obstacles to accomplish them correctly and quickly in this lifetime. May we in all our lives practice these sacred teachings and bring great benefit to everyone. By learning the scriptures and through reasoning, we are free of the veil of ignorance, the cause of all conflicting emotional programs. By contemplating the oral instructions of the Lama, we overcome the darkness of doubt. And with the light resulting from meditation practice, we illuminate the natural state just as it is. May the light of this threefold practice of knowledge increase. 
to the nature of the ground comes the two truths, relative and ultimate, which are the natures of the mind, gaining freedom from the extremes of eternalism and voidness called nihilism. This supreme path has the two accumulations of merit for myself and others and is free from the limits of exaggeration and degeneration and any form of denigration. We attain the fruits of these two benefits free from the extremes of existence and quiescent, which is the five energy fields of our true nature. We connect with such a teaching free from error and the ground of purification is the mind's essence, voidness. And this becomes a union of being empty and awake in a state of cognizance, awareness. That which purifies the great Vajra-like practice of Mahamudra, may we realize the immaculate Dharmakaya, the fruition of having practiced and purified all obscuration and all the passing stains of confusion that are left to be purified. To have cut one's mix misconceptions of the ground is the confidence of the view generating conviction. To sustain this without distraction is the key point of meditation and contemplation. To train in all points of practice is the supreme activity of the Bodhisattva. May we possess the confidence of the view the practice of meditation and the activity as the result, all as one thing. All phenomena are the illusory display of one's mind. Mind is devoid of mind, empty of any entity whatsoever. Empty and yet unceasing, it manifests anything whatsoever. Realizing this completely, may we cut the basis of, of ignorance at its root. We have mistaken our non-existent personal experience to be objects. And by the power of this ignorance, mistaking self in a thinking form to be real, in a state of self-cognizing. This is a state of the idea of separation applied to everything with a complete lack of unity. This dualistic face, fixation, everyone has, and has made all of us to wander in the sphere of samsaric existences, experiencing unlimited pain and suffering as a result. May we cut ignorance, confusion, delusion, and so forth at the very root. It is not existence, even the victorious <coughs> do not see it. It is not not existence since, since it is the basis of all samsara and nirvanic existence. 
It is not a contradiction, but the middle way of unity, that there is no such thing as a state of separation. May we realize this nature of mind free from extremes. No one can indicate it by saying this is it. No one can deny it by, by saying this is not it. This nature transcending all concepts is uncompounded and timeless. May we realize this view of the true meaning. Without realizing this, we circle through the ocean of samsaric suffering. When realizing maturity in Buddhahood is not somewhere else. It is the com completely devoid of it, of it is this or it is not this. May we see this vital point of the all ground, which is the nature of all things in phenomenal worlds. Perceiving is mine. Being empty is also mine. Realizing is mine. Being mistaken is also mine. Having arisen, arisen is mine. Having ceased to exist is also mine. May we cut through all doubt, doubts concerning this mind. Unspoiled by intellectual and deliberate meditation, unmoved by the winds of ordinary distractions, may we in practice become skilled in sustaining the practice of the mind's essence as voidness. And we may we be able to rest in that unfabricated state called innate naturalness without any judgment whatsoever. The waves of gross and level thoughts having spontaneously subsided, the river of unwavering mind naturally abides. It is free from the stains of dullness and sluggishness and any form of conceptualization, emotionality or drama. May we be stable in the unmoving ocean of Samatha open, clarity, peace, and bliss. When we look again and again into the unseen mind, the fact that there is nothing to see is vividly seen just as it is. Cutting through doubts about its nature being existence or non-existence, we unmistakably recognize our own essence. When observing objects, they are to be seen to be the mind devoid of objects. When we observe the, observe the mind, there is no mind, because just as it is, it's empty, empty of any entity. When observing both of these together, dualistic fixation is spontaneously liberated. May we realize this luminous void nature of the mind. Being free from mental fabrication, it is called Mahamudra, the great view. Devoid of extremes is called Madhyamika, the great middle way. Being the mind of bliss, it is called Dzogchen, which is the embodiment of this state. May we attain the confidence of really realizing all by simply knowing this one nature. Great bliss, free from attachment, is unceasing. 
Clarity, luminosity, devoid of fixation, is unobscured. Voidness or non-thought transcending the intellect is spontaneously present Without any effort, may our experience be unceasing and enter into the present moment. The fixation of clinging to good experience is spontaneously free. The confusion of bad thoughts is naturally purified. Natural ordinary mind, we call natural mind, is free of acceptance and rejection. May we realize the truth of Dharmata, devoid of any constructs, judgment, good, bad, high or low, or ignorant. The nature of all beings is this enlightened state. But because of not realizing it, they wander endlessly in the samsaric emotionality of the drama world. Toward condescending beings who suffer from this, may overwhelming compassion arise in our minds. The play of this overwhelming compassion being unobstructed in the present moment of loving kindness becomes the empty essence nakedly dawning. May we constantly practice in this way, day and night. This supreme path of unity is devoid of errors. The eyes of higher intelligence or super knowledges resulting from the power of the practice is the effect. The ripening of sentient beings to understand and become there through the cultivation of Buddha realms is the activity and the perfection of aspirations to accomplish all enlightened qualities is the activity of the Dakini. May we attain Buddhahood or higher states of intelligence of maturity in the human condition. And having accomplished this perfect state of ripening and cultivating, may we benefit countless other being. By the power of this compassion, may all the victorious ones and their children in the ten directions and all the perfect virtue that exists in this world, may I and all beings attain accomplishment in accordance with these aspirations right now in this place and time. Oh.
Karma Pachano, Karma Pachano, Karma Pachano, Karma Pachano, Karma Pachano, Karma Pachano, Karma Pachano. Chano means may we, our minds, and the Karmapa's mind merge as the four Kayas benefiting all sentient beings is our mother. When we enter, enter into this path of skillful means, which is what the prayer at the Karmapa demonstrated the meaning of being natural, like the natural world around us. It is perfect. It doesn't have a beginning, middle, or end. And it is in place to sustain life. But specifically as the Dharmakaya, which is our Bodhisattva training of the all existing nature of our mind, this world, this universe, even this planet, is simply to move directly into that nature in harmony, no separation. So that your mind and the world around you are the same. The five elements of the world around you are infinite, they're universal. They are the mother principle of this universe. And she is called Prajnaparamita, the mother of perfect wisdom. And the essence of these five elements are the simplicity of a mother being able to produce a human being. And the simplicity of these practices with the oral instructions of the teachers, the Lama, show you that your simple, that your true nature is too simple, is too close, is too profound, is too perfect, is too easy. So it evades the smart asses of the human condition. So we have to slow down, sit, practice Mahayana, and now with the guidance of our teachers tonight, Mahayana using one of the teachers, Padma Sabhava, <clears throat> and his consort Yeshe Shoigyo, as the method. Now everything vibrates. So tonight we started with the three lights breathing. And we extended these three lights through our physical form and then out to the world around us and connected to the five elements healing, which is necessary for your body mind complex to be able to practice Dharma. You have to be healthy. And attain a vibratory state of energy. Now we're energy feeders. We do it by what we eat, by what we do, by what we think, by what we say, all our social programs, and our involvement with the world around us in infinite ways. But all of this vibration is summed up 
by the element space or vom in Tibetan. They don't have V in their alphabet, so they say bomb. But this C syllable, Sanskrit C syllable, is that energy of the Dakini, of the mother principle of space. And it applies to intelligent women and a few men <laughs> that are functioning with this kind of energy. Then the other code, oh, and that one is red on a white background in a blue sky. Then out of that same blue sky comes the sound or vibration of all of the Dharma, wisdom mother, as the sound whom. And these two to blend together in union with these path of skillful means practices, all the sutras, for instance, Tara is all of the Dakini, and Hung is all of the methods to stabilize one situation and increase good health and intelligence. But this is infinite. There's no restriction. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, this covers every aspect of good health. And there's a lot of power in that, as there is in the energy of space. So we are taking these two sounds, these vibrations, as the body, speech, and mind of the Lama, and in this case, generating the deities the Padmasambhava and Yeshe Soigal in union. And when you can generate these two de deities, Guru Rinpoche and the Lama Dakini Soigal, in union, then the essence of their union, sexual union, with the mantras, which I'm going to show you, and the, the basic practice become to good healing energy into your heart. This keeps you going. This is getting all this energy up to here and everywhere else in your body. But more importantly, the mental qualities of the heart is the Dharma of loving kindness and compassion. And speaking of vibrations, the body, speech, and mind of the Lama, any Lama teacher that teaches the path of skillful means, Bodhisattva training, is extended to the practitioner with the vibration of the sound OM, which is the universal energy of space and light for the body. The sound A ah is that energy being expressed through the speech, for instance, mantra and the prayers I just read by Kamapa. And so that, that's the A. Ah. And then again, the HUM is the wisdom transmission of good health being absolutely necessary and extend that to everyone in this life, in your next life, and future life, no limit. So this is a timeless application, these three, body, speech, mind of the teacher. So let's do the fact.
We created these practice texts based on the sutra practice of Padmasambhava and Yeshe Sarga and many other practices as a condensed version for new people entering the Dharma, wanting to attain realizations and experiences fast. So the sutra is the opening method. And so again, we have Padmasambhava and Yeshe Sarga on the cover in union. Then the opening prayer that all the Tibetans know comes under the heading of shower of blessing. A guru yoga based on the seven line prayer of Guru Rinpoche, Padmasambhava. So I'm going to read that seven line prayer because just saying this prayer many times produces those blessings. Organ yogi news of dawn, pema geso dawn bola, yajin jogi, rodru yune, pema jume jesu dawn. Kador Kondro Mampo Kor KP Jesu Dabjuki Jingi Lobsu Jesu So Guru Padma Sedi Hon. In English, it starts with the sound Hom, Universal Healing. Boom, on the northwest border of the country of Kashmir called Orgam, on the fallen heart of a lotus, you obtain most marvelous and excellent Siddhi. Siddhi means accomplishment. Renowned as the lotus born, which means you take birth in the human condition. That's what the lotus symbolizes. You are surrounded by a vast retinue of Dakini. As I practice following in your footsteps, I pray you approach, confer your blessings. Om Guru Pema, bestow blessings upon us. So this seven line prayer of Guru Rinpoche, all the Tibetans know this in Sanskrit. It's kind of like the mantra, Omani Pemi Hom, and the Tara, mantra and the 21 Taras, they, they know this as part of their culture. And all the monks and nuns and lay people and yogis and yogini. And Karmapa was born knowing this mantra. Now, now Karmapa is an emanation of Padmasambhava. I know this because he told me. <laughs> and he gave me us on Oahu, Honolulu, at our Dharma centers, 50, 60 people, this practice and empowerment. And from that, we have this text. And Lama Tashi sitting in front of you tonight. Now it is mentioned in that seven line prayer that he comes with a retinue of Dakinis. What they don't say is those Dakinis with the blessing of the practice produce the results. They're the fabricators, they're the manifestors. The Dakini energy of the teachers is how the Dharma spreads, works, how Dharma centers spring up, how stupas are built, and so forth. Well, the head Dakini 
was Padma Sambhava's consort in Tibet, which he trained, and she was Tibetan. He was Kashmir, an Indian yogi, not a monk, not a nun, just a yogi. But she became the first Tibetan Lama with his training. And many of the lineage Lamas don't acknowledge that fact. They give all the credit to Padma Zimbabwe, which is not appropriate. So in this text, Karmapa said, we must have the prayer to Yeshe Soigel, the Dakini, the first Lama. It goes like this. The Dakini of voidness of Dharma Dhatu called Kunto Zangmo, being the mother of all the victorious Buddhas, kind of soul mother who protects the Tibetans and all people, bestower of the most excellent accomplishments called cities, sovereign of the Dakinis of supreme bliss, who manifests all Buddha activity and accomplishment. Yeshe Soigo at your Lotus feet, I pray. Now the term lotus means in the human condition. Please confer your blessing which pacifies inner, outer, and secret obstacles. Sustain the longevity of our Lama Gurus. Confer your blessings which pacify this area of war, famine, disease, poverty, environmental destruction, hunger, and spread of toxin. Confer your blessings which pacify sorcery, hexes, and curses by nasty humans. Confer your blessings which increase longevity, splendor, and the accomplishment of transcendental knowledge. Confer your blessings, which spontaneously accomplish all of our appropriate wishes. This prayer was written by the 15th Karmapa, Kakya Dorje, nursed by Wisdom Dakini. From this may all virtue and goodness spread everywhere. Now the rest of this text is, is a soak, a gana chakra, a bliss peace offering. And Abby and myself have been practicing this almost constantly on our, this is now our third year of retreat. And it invites the ocean of the three roots, all the lamas, all the deities, and all the protectors into your present situation. And ask them to become your retinue. So this is very powerful. But for tonight, We're simply going to do the mantra of Guru Rinpoche with the seven line prayer, which is quite enough to accomplish your appropriate wishes. Sit with your back straight. hands in a comfortable position and receive the empowerment of this Yidam practice of Padmasambhava and Yeshe Soigal and Retinu. And visualize the Lama as a representation of all the Lamas of all the lineages of Tibetan Buddhism and all the teachers from the time of Shakyamuni Buddha 2,600 years ago 
down to the present day. And of all the Buddhas in existence in the three times, past, present, and future. So from the Lama's forehead in front of you, white light enters your forehead with the vibration of the sound OM. Red light from the Lama's throat enters your throat with the vibration of the sound OM. And blue light from the Lama's heart chakra to your heart chakra is the wisdom impartment of infinite healing with the sound OM. Then to receive the full empowerment, the Lama melt, when you can see the three lights shining into you simultaneously, the Lama melts into you like water into water. Then the Om is established in white light in your forehead, the Ah in red light in your throat, and the Hong in blue light in your heart chakra. And these three, the white ohm comes down to the red ah, these two into the blue home in unity. And with the Lama's blending, the body, speech, and mind of the Lama become your body, speech, and mind. To benefit and give blessings to this and all practices of deity yoga. But specifically for Padmasambhava and Yeshe Soigo being your Yidam benefactor. When you can see you and Bob and Yeshe Soigo in union, then these three become the home and the bomb melding together in your heart center. And by extending the healing energy of this to every sentient being in the universe, infinite in number, infinite humans, infinite animals, infinite spirits, that projection is the practice. Starting with your own mother, all your relatives, friends, everybody you have karma with, pets, everybody you consider enemies or adversaries, all the humans on the planet, all the animals on the planet, all the spirits everywhere. To receive the healing energy of this practice to all of them causes the mantra, Om Vajra Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Om Pe. Again. Om Vajra Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Om Pe. Om Vajra Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Om Pe. Om Lama Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Hum Pe. Om Lama Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Hum Pe. Om Vajra Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Hum Pe. Om Vajra Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Hum Pe. Om Mama Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Hum Pe. Om Vajra Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Hum Pe. Om Mama Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal Siddhi Hum Pe. Siddhi means accomplishment. Is, is another mantra, Om Mama Vajra Guru Padmasambhava Lama Yeshe Soigal? Yeah, you can say Om Mahum Vajra Guru 
Baba Sambhavi City Home. There are about 21 different mantras. I, okay. I picked this one for tonight because it's long. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Very beneficial because you're recognizing Padmasambhava, the yogi Padmasambhava, as a Buddha in union with the first Lama Yeshe Soidel, his consort and student, as the source of the healing energy for your body, speech, and mind, and all your spiritual accomplishment according to Karmapa, prayer of Mahamudra. That you know that, become that, attain that. Oh, Mama Guru, Baba Sambhava, Mama Yeshe, Soya, Sadi, Om Pei, Om Baja Guru, Baba Sambhava, Mama Yeshe, Soya, Sadi, Om Pei, Om Mama Guru, Baba Sambhava, Mama Yeshe, Soya, Sadi, Om Pei. Om Lama Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga, Siddhi Hong Pei. Om Lama Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga, Siddhi Hong Pei. Om Lama, Om Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga, Siddhi Hong Pei. Om Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga, Siddhi Hong Pei. Om Mama Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga Siddhi, Om Pei, Om Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga Siddhi, Om Pei, Om Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga Siddhi, Om Pei, Om Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe Sarga Siddhi, Om Pei, Om Vajra Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Lama Yeshe Sarga, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Lama Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Lama Yeshe Sarga, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Vajra Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Lama Yeshe Sarga, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Vajra Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Lama Yeshe so I go city home pay on Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe. So I go city home pay on Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe. So I go city home pay on Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Lama Yeshe. So I go city home pay. Om Aho, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava City Home Pay. Om Aho, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava City Home Pay. Om Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava. Om Aho, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava City Home Pay. Om Aho. Vajra Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Zimbabwe, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Ah Hong, Vajra Guru, Baba Sambhava, Siddhi Hong Pei, Om Mah Hong Vajra Guru Baba Sambhava Siddhi Hong Pei Om Mah Hong Vajra Guru Baba Sambhava Siddhi Hong Pei Om Mah Hong Vajra Guru Baba Sambhava Siddhi Hong Pei Om Mah Hong Vajra Guru Baba Sambhava 
Sidi Ho, O Maho, Raja, Baba Sambhava, 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 Sidi Ho, O Maho, When you are practicing deity yoga as the deity, in this case, Padmasambhava, Yeshe Soya, <clears throat> look into your mind. You eat whatever whether you eat or whether you drink, look into your mind. Then eating and drinking are the undivided peace offerings of your mind. Look into your mind as whether you are whether you are lying down or whether you are asleep. That is the instruction in recognizing the luminosity of your mind as sleep and dream. When you are practicing the sadhanas of the deities called pujas, whether it be sutra or tantra method of these profound teachings, look into your mind. They are the profound meaning and activity. This will avert all obstacles, interferences, and all distractions. Whatever fleeting acts you do, do them in the presence of this mind training. Do them as you would the practice of the final moment of leaving your body, emerging into the next life. Whatever activities occur that beguile your mind, distract your mind, such as talks, spectacles, experiences, and crowds of many people and their activities, don't fall under the power of distraction or any drama. But without be forgetting to be persistently mindful, dissolve the two deities together with all sentient beings into your heart center, into the seed syllable of the deities, in this case, Hum and Vam. This is the key point of the profound meditation of the accomplishment stage of any deity yoga. Develop the stability in this very mindfulness. So you are the two deities in union. And the essence of the mantras 
spread from their place of sexual union into your heart center as loving kindness and other beneficial qualities, especially bliss. Now, Dissolve all sentient beings into these two deities. Then you as Padmasambhava and Yeshi Sarga disappear into the mantra, circling the home and the vam in your heart center. Then these two vibrations as one in a five color sphere of blazing vivid light disappear into the sun, the infinite light of your own awareness. As bliss. The simplicity is no meditation, simply be pre present, comfortable, open, clear, and naked in this state of vivid awareness.
Guru Rinpoche, Padma Sambhava, gave many teachings and made many projections of what would happen at different times for thousands of years into the future. And one of his teachings is called the ultimate confession of simplicity. Because some people think this mind training is some place to go, like a religion, it is not. It's simply to reprogram your mind in the same way you would reprogram your cell phone to get the apps that you want working properly, the application. And it is already aware. It's just that your awareness is dramified. So he gave this prayer as an antidote. Ah, oh. this ah oh is the vibration of your speech as powerful energy. It is the sound of the energy of space and light together. Dharma Dhatu is the nature of the Dharmakaya, the universe of space and light. It is itself devoid of any fabrication. How mistaken we are to regard it as dual, like good and bad, and so forth. How deluded to attribute characteristic to things that in reality don't exist. I confess this in the expanse of great bliss, free from fabrication. Samantra Bhadra is devoid of being good and bad. This natural state of the universe exists as perfect. How tiring it is to regard him or her, her as a deity, like the judgment of good and bad. How pitiful it is to hold him as pure or impure. I confess in the great expanse, free from the judgments of good and bad. Bodhisattva mind called bodhicitta is devoid of birth and death. Being timeless, how tiring it is to regard it as being now and later. How deleted to hold as being the state of born or dying. I confess in the expanse of unchanging and immortality. Dharmakaya is devoid of divisions. It is all pervasive, like space. How retiring to regard it as objects and the mind as separate. How deluded to hold to this du du duality of world and being as being separate. I confess this in the space of non-dual wisdom. Whatever is experienced is nothing, is much, nothing but the display of the father and mother. How tiring to regard it as individual thoughts. How to deluded to misapprehend it with names and labels. I confess this in a space free of fixated on this display. Wisdom deities and protectors possessing the Samaya of Bodhicitta is myself as a yogi practicing these Samaya's commitments correctly. <laughs> I happen 
be free of the delusion of not realizing the view. I openly confess it with deep remorse and regret. It is the confession of the simple nature of everything you need is you already have. Kewa di nerdu da, chagya chapa gugirne, chowa chenke malu pa, dei sala kopar sho, sanje kusum dempa jem la don, choni meger dempa jem la don. Hindu Miche Dumpai Jim Laki, Chitar Goma Bolam Drupar Show. By this virtue of having realized Mahapurya may have quickly establish all beings in that state without one left out. By the blessing of the three bodies of the Buddha being accomplished, by the blessing of the truth of this Dharma being unchanging, and by the blessing of the wishes of the Sangha being unwavering, may this dedication prayer be fulfilled. May all the Lamas have long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity, and may all their wishes be fulfilled. May all beings be free of suffering, established in bliss, and equanimity. And here comes our practice dog. Aloha and Tashi Delay. Be well and have good dreams. I just got a kiss. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lama Tashi. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, puppy dog. <laughs> this is Layla. Oh, Layla. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you.